Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 11 of the Hello World series of my 6502 assembly programming tutorials. We're going to be looking at Hello World on the BBC. But wait, I hear you say, you've done that already. Well, indeed I have, but we're going to do it a little bit differently this time. Now, in the past, and usually in these tutorials, I always use a Windows assembler, and I transfer my um, assembled programs to the emulator that we're trying to run on. Now this time we're actually going to assemble a Hello World example on the BBC itself. You see BBC Basic is actually capable of assembly which is quite incredible really. I grew up with the Amstrad CPC and um, we didn't have anything like that so I'm a little bit jealous of the BBC in this case because it's got a very capable assembler built into Basic so that's what we're going to use. So we're going to still be using our emulator as usual. Um, we're going to have our program in Windows but we're going to transfer it to basic using the um, paste option from the um, the edit menu here. So we're not going to be doing all of the typing in the base in basic, but we certainly could do. Um, it's it's not the there would be any technical difference. It would just take a lot more time. So that's what we're going to do. Now, if you're interested in 6502 assembly and it's your first time here, I'm afraid I have to show my book. I have a book on assembly. It covers Z86502, 68086 and ARM. It's got a basic um, instruction set and all kinds of um, examples and things. So if you're interested, please take a look at that and support my content. Anyway, let's go over to our source code and let's take a peek. Okay, so we've got our emulator here on the right here and we've got some sample code on the left here. Now, the first thing we're going to do in our in our emulator in basic is we're going to change the screen mode. We're going to use mode zero here. Now, we don't actually need to do this, but the um, default mode that the, the emulator is starting up in, some of the characters actually show up incorrectly. And so that will get a bit confusing. The square brackets look like arrows and things. So um, we're not going to have that because we will get confused. OK, now what we're going to do next is we're going to transfer this starter program here, which is literally only have a, has a single command, a return command in it. That's the only assembly command here. This is we're going to discuss the um, the basic part of the code because the the basic um, the literal basic uh, programming language has to do some of the work of actually assembling the program. So I've just used the um, paste menu in the edit edit paste menu here to transfer the text from the Windows clipboard into the emulator, and we just hit enter there. And now if we do list in our emulator in basic you can see we've done a listing here and you can see basically we've got the exact same program that we just um, transferred from notepad here so this is the program here and um, what we now do is we now simply type run now if um, we get no errors so then everything has gone correctly and you can see um, we've we've got the actual assembly of the commands here. So there's our return command assembled. And we've got a text message here saying assembled to 6681. And that is actually a line of the code I've added here. Now, when we want to run our program, we can either do call and 6681 because we've just been told that is the address that it assembled to. Now, in this case, nothing will happen except for it will return and not crash, hopefully. So um, that's a good sign. Um, Rather than having to type in the specific number, though, the way we've assembled it, we can do call MC percent. Now, this MC percent is a variable that we've defined, and we'll discuss that in just a moment. But this is effectively the same as call 6681. So when we do this again, we just get a return. OK, so there we've actually assembled the, the absolute minimum imaginable program of just a return statement. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to discuss the lines of basic code that we've just executed. And we're going to discuss what they actually do, because um, because we need to understand what our basic program is doing for us and, and why the various parts of it work. OK, let's take a peek. Now, we've got a dim statement now. Um, you, you may know DIM if you've programmed basic this, it will define arrays. However, this um, syntax is a little bit odd here. We've got MC% percent and then we've got a number following that. Now, what this actually does is it defines a block of free memory. So uh, it will find some free memory and it will allocate a number of bytes. Now, we've specified 100 here, but I'm told that actually allocates one extra byte. So this will define 101 bytes here, and that is the space for our program. So MC% percent will now point to the start of a block of free space that the operating system has allocated for our program's use. Now, what we've got next is a loop. We've got for opt% percent equals 0 to 3, step 3. So this loop will run twice, once with, M with opt% percent as 0 and once with opt% percent as 3. Uh, we've got the next statement here, which will repeat and do the second run of that. Now, this is for the assembler. We'll explain it in just a moment. Okay. 
And we've now got a command p% percent equals mc%. Percent. Now mc% percent is the start of our program as defined by the dim statement there. p% percent is actually effectively the program counter for the assembler. So when the assembler runs, p% percent will be updated with the position in, in the code as it's calculating things. Now remember opt percent in this loop, it means this is going to run twice. So we need to update p% percent within this loop to set the program counter to the start of the code for the two iterations of the loop. Now, if you are familiar with assemblers, you may have heard of things like two-pass assemblers. And what this is, is the first time the assembler runs, it has to look at the full length of the code and work out the, the values that the labels will have. And then on the second pass, those labels are given the correct memory locations. And so this is effectively defined, this opt percent loop here is defining the two passes. And we're updating the program counter, resetting it for the second pass effectively here. Now, this opt option here is where we're setting the assembler. This is an assembler directive telling the assembler what settings to use. And a value of zero basically means don't output any errors, just carry on regardless. And a value of three means tell the user what's being assembled, a listing. And also, if there's any errors, at this point, you should know the, the values of all of the labels. So if you don't, there's something wrong and fail. So that is what the opt option is doing. The RTS command here is actually part of our program code. That is a return command in 6502. The square brackets here, these actually represent the start and end of our assembly code. So this, this square bracket here on line nine is the last line of basic for a while. And then all the following lines are either assembler directives or assembly code themselves. Then we've got a, a closing square bracket there. And then we've got a next statement, which is basic again. And we've got a print statement in basic showing MC percent to the screen just for my convenience. Now, we do have a few other little things we should take a peek at. Now, we've got some rem statements here. These are basic rem statements. Colon rem. Colon is starting a new command, and rem is the command for a remark, so that does nothing. The basic will ignore those, and this is just so we can clearly see what's going on. Now, in this case, I've actually used these um, slash symbols here, but um, th this is because I saw these in the documentation for the assembler. But I'm told semicolons do actually work, so we could have used semicolons just fine as with our normal assembly here. Um, there were some things I needed to change, but I believe that isn't one of them. So if we just take that here and we just paste it in again here and we just run again, this 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 will work fine with semicolons or with those slashes. So um, it, it's entirely up to us which we want to use. So either will work just fine. So that is the basic that we need to use. And I'd suggest you use this as a sort of template, you know, using this loop here, the definition of the program counter and the allocation for memory, and after your code, the loop. And if you want to show this, the address assembled to, to the screen, you don't need to, but I, I preferred to see what was going on in that sense. So that's our absolute minimal example there. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to use a more um, more normal example. This is a converted version of my previous Hello World example. So what we're going to do here is we're going to copy all of this code. We're going to paste it into our, uh, our emulator again. So we've got our paste option here. You can see all of that program code going on there. And then if we do run here, we've got our message that it is assembled. And if we do call MC percent, we get a nice hello world message there. So we have successfully assembled this program and then we have executed it all within the emulator itself. You know, just the exception that we are using the copy paste to save us a bit of typing. So there we go, we've successfully assembled this program. Now I did have to make a few little tweaks to the program code just to get it working with the, this assembler. There were a few differences that I had to bear in mind. So we're just gonna have a look at them now. Now, the first one was the hexadecimal notation. Now, um, usually with 6502, we would use a dollar symbol before a set of characters to mark them as hexadecimal. However, the BBC assembler uses the and symbol. So you can see here, we've used the and symbol here. To, to refer to these as hexadecimal. So that is one change. Um, another change is that the labels, they start with a full stop here. Now, one important thing to notice about BASIC itself that I should have mentioned is um, we do have to put all of the commands in capital letters. I mean, in some, uh, some BASIC syntaxes, in fact, most, I believe, the, uh, BASIC isn't usually case sensitive um, for commands at least, but, but this BASIC is now rather strangely, the assembler didn't seem to be, which 
baffled me. You'd have thought if basic was case sensitive, the assembler would be too, but it didn't seem to be the case. But I, I thought for safety, I've actually missed one. That one should that one's actually lower case. Um, we'll we'll change that to. We'll change that to uppercase just for consistency there. But um, yeah, the, the assembler seems to be not case sensitive, but basic is case sensitive. A bit strange there. But um, so we got our full stops for our, our labels there. Not, nothing too serious there. Um, and the w one thing that we did have to do now, um, in, in the past we've had to take the upper byte and the lower byte of a 16-bit pair. Now usually you might see them like this, a greater than symbol and a less than symbol to get the upper and lower part. However, those, these do not work with BASIC. However, we have a perfectly um, suitable alternative. Now we can use the div command to get a whole number division. So this will get effectively the higher byte from the 16-bit message label. And this mod command will get the remainder of dividing message by 256, effectively getting the lower byte. So these two will get the higher and lower byte just fine for storing to memory addresses 70 and 71 in hexadecimal there. So those changes did need to be made. Um, then the final one that we really had to worry about was defining our byte data. Now um, we use the EQU command actually to define byte data in this case. Now we've used EQUS to define string data here and we've used EQUB to define byte data. So we've defined a byte of 255. My um, examples I always use 255 block character termination. So that byte is detected as the end of the string. Okay. So how are we actually executing our program? Well, of course, we've got the same initialization block here, the basic part. We've got our opt statement, which is again for the two pass execution, setting the assembler options. Um, what we've got then first is an execution of a jump to subroutine FFE7. This is a new line um, routine within the um, ROM. So we're creating a new line there. And then what we're doing next is we are loading the 16-bit address in two parts of our message. Our message is our hello world message here. We're loading that into memory addresses 70 and 71 in the zero page. We are then executing the print string subroutine and then we're showing another new line to the screen. Uh, that's a jump though, so there is, a, there is no return from that subroutine. So that will effectively return to the calling system, which is basic in this case. Now the print string routine itself here, we are loading the Y register with zero. The Y is being defined as the offset to our characters. We are then loading in a character from the address at 70 and 71 in the, the zero page in hexadecimal. We're comparing that to 255. If it is 255, this is end of line. Now, if you wanted to use um, zero character termination, you could just change that to CMP zero. I, I use 255, but um, you can do that as well. Now. In that case, we're jumping to done. Otherwise, we are showing the character to the screen with FFE3, which is the operating system print character routine. It's called OS ASCII, I believe. So we are running that to show our character to the screen. We're then increasing the Y counter and we're repeating until we get that character 255, at which point we simply return. We just return there. And that's, that's in lowercase as well. I, I manually... I manually changed these to uppercase. Um, I, interestingly, I was actually doing a second um, version of the of this kind of example with the um, R, with the ARM assembler because the um, RISC OS Basic is BBC Basic as well, and that also has an assembler. And that didn't like uppercase labels for some reason. So in this case, I manually um, I manually changed the case, and in the other time in the other case, I just block changed it with the um, uppercase option, and and actually block changing it was more convenient, but it actually caused other problems. So um, in this case, I've got a few that I've missed to changing the case of. But as I say, the assembler isn't actually case sensitive. Anyway, there we go. So that's how we can run these examples on our system. If you go to my website, you can download the text file for today's example. It's included in the sources and you can just paste it into your assembler in the exact same way as I have here. Now, if you've if you've come across this and this is the first time you've seen my channel, I've got a lot of uh, tutorials on the BBC and a lot of tutorials on other kinds of assembly language. I've, I've covered about 15 assembly languages now and uh, dozens of systems. So if you are interested in something other than the BBC, in a different assembly language, please search my YouTube channel or my website because I've probably already covered it. Anyway, I hope you've liked what you've seen today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.